What's up, readers? Episode 36 coming at you hot. All right. Uh, you guys seem to like these updates, like these uh, intros. So I'm going to keep doing them. Keep you up to date on everything that's happening in the Cash Daddy's world. So first things first, CashDaddy'sT-shirts.com if you want to get a shirt. All right. If you're banking fatties on uh, shit coins, meme coins, stocks, options, altcoins, tier two coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, go get a shirt. The shirts are flying off the shelves. Like I said, that's an old, old term. Flying off the shelves, though. And uh, we got a new one coming out within the next 24 hours it's like a moon crypto shirt with all, all four of us on there and i'm telling you it's my favorite shirt yet i've said this for three weeks favorite shirt yet it might sell out fast so if you want to stay in the loop you follow us on socials okay twitter instagram facebook reddit discord uh tiktok we have literally everything we're popping off on all of them all right we're trying to build a community here I want you guys to join. If you haven't already, please go do it. It's Cash Daddy's Podcast or Cash Daddy's Pod on all socials. So go follow us now. And also the links are all in the description. So I, I, I literally could not make it any easier for you guys. You just All you do is scroll down, scroll down, click a link, follow. Boom, you're done. All right. And also, you guys know what I'm about to say. 30% of you aren't subscribed. I don't care if this is your first time listening. We're a bunch of ass clowns. You got to subscribe to the channel, okay? Ever since I've been saying this, we've gained a thousand subscribers. I know all of it doesn't come from this, but I mean, some of you are just, you're watching this, you're listening to this right now thinking, oh my God, I've listened to these guys for 10 episodes. I'm not subscribed yet. So do it. All right, just do it. And last thing, Sam Tripoli is coming to a city near you. Dates right here, May 27th, 28th, 29th, Bloomington, Minnesota. June 3rd, this is a real thing. He'll be in Miami for Shitcoin 2021. Jada, I know you're listening. You better be there, okay? Shitcoin 2021. It's, it's pretty much exactly what it sounded. Like. Sam's going to be there. Tickets are free if you get them before June 1st. All right, so go get them. Shitcoin2021.com. Now, these next three shows, these are tinfoil hat shows. So Sam will be there, yes. But he'll be accompanied by his good friend, Eddie Bravo. So you're not going to want to miss this. June 11th and 12th, Houston, Texas. July 30th, Dallas, Texas. July 31st, Oklahoma City. If you want your tickets, get them at samtripoli.com. So there we have it. Announcements are out of the way. We have a great interview today. Jamie Josta, dude's electric. He knows what he's talking about. He's got background and everything and uh, makes amazing music. So if you guys like it, let us know in the comments. And also, we get into this uh, 4chan Bitcoin conspiracy a little bit. So let me know if you think it's plausible if it's real or if it's just complete and utter bullshit i'll leave it up for interpretation all right enjoy the show let's roll a clip all right 4chan so take it with a grain of salt i thought it was complete bullshit but it started making the rounds on online and stuff but then this guy everything he predicted down to the minute came 100 percent true flash crashes all these whales selling everything and they said that they're after this one guy and they want to liquidate him because he fucked some other whale's wife so they're oh, just oh, snaps, dude. Oh, this is the stuff you this, come to cash down. Yeah. 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 This is like the TMZ portion of Cash Daddy. I'm all dude, about that. Dude, dude. dish. He, he dude set dish. one in some dude's wife and they said, let's take him down. Cash Daddy. purposes only. You'd be an idiot to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. And welcome to Cash Daddies, where banking fatties okay thank you so much for tuning in again and thank you readers for all your support the show is growing and it's because of you guys spreading the word putting it out there banking them fatties letting us know about it joining me as always are the ass the ass brothers chris neff and how we do it yes chris questions can you no longer introduce us as the ass to ass brothers, Chris Neff and Howie do? Because when you do, Howie and I always respond at the same time. So I would like an ass brother intro, Chris, and then an ass brother intro, Howie. Can we vote on that real quick? How many people want to do what Neff is crying about? Raise your hand. 
Okay, that didn't pass. That didn't pass. <laughs> I can still refer to you guys as that. <laughs> and on the ones and two, he's a young G, little E, Evan Hand. How are you, Evan? Been better. Been better. Yeah. Still tying that rope. Again, again, there's my point. I don't get to say how I'm doing because it's Chris, just, how are you geez. doing? I'm doing awesome. Nice. Holy shit. I'm doing awesome. We banged fatties last week. That's what we do around here. Yeah, I'm hemorrhaging yeah. a little bit. We also fine. got ass fucked by crypto. But if so, you're not 100% into crypto, your butthole isn't bleeding like Howie and mine. Howie Dewey fucking had probably the best week in probably two months last week. Is okay, this first, first of all, be a new uh, thing? can we vote on whether Howie can refer to himself no. in third yeah. person? That's got to go. That's got to go. <laughs> That's the most uncomfortable <laughs> shit yeah. I've ever heard in my life. Howie Dewey banking Howie Dewey fatties. That's what just happened there. Howie you Dewey's well, here to tell you. Strap in, listen up, fellas. <laughs> what went well, Howie? Well, you know what? It started off. It started off at the beginning of the week where you know two weeks ago I came out and when Tesla was at seven fifty, I shit all over it. You know, I I got a little feedback. I got a little uh resistance from people i didn't know like you were german others <laughs> don't mess with the widow maker <laughs> and then it, it pretended it then it dropped about 30 percent. i bought a put on it made good money on it um it went down and it literally hit 550 and i said you know i don't like this company but i see this thing dead cat bouncing back so i bought it the thing bounced back up to like 585 i sold the call made about 30 percent but then That's I went. What I big. love about you, you go both ways, and people still have a hard time understanding that you're. You they don't get it. It's like that dude the other day said. He's like, "Well, the market people get." I'm like, "No, buddy. One man's fucking when one man sells and another guy buys. Man, they both high five each other. It's a great yeah. thing." So then, Sam, it went back but, down, but with no eye contact. Remember that. <laughs> so Sam, it went back down. I really <laughs> loaded up the puts the second time. I loaded up the puts. And that that thing tanked in two days. So then I covered them and I called Neffy and I said, Neffy, I like these calls right here better than I've liked anything. I just, I'm looking at the chart. I think these things are going to bounce. It, it, it bounced. I got out of that. That'd be a Neffy bought AMC puts. Tell them about listen, it, Chris. Listen, you cannot ask me to not call you the ass ass brothers when you're referring to one of you as nephews, okay? I, I can't do it. It's the it's, Neffy it's and Dewey it's show. <laughs> okay, Dude, so, so, so yeah, 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 tell them, Neffy, what we, we do. We do need to bring this up because <laughs> another term came to the show. You were gone last week, uh, Sam, uh, but everybody was screaming Moass, Moass, something I don't get anymore for some reason, which is not fair, universe. <laughs> Even with these fucking hard rock bone fucking hammers I got going on, I still can't. I'm striking out. Anyway, everybody's str screaming Moass on AMC, and Howie's like, What's Moass? And I'm like, Listen, Grandpa, it stands for Mother of All Short Squeezes. GME. Oh, snap. Yeah, GME's been screaming Moass. I've been screaming Moass. So much my neighbors are like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I can't get any more ass. Anyway, we go to AMC. All these dorks are like, hey, guys, the mo ass is coming. And of course, Howie and I, we look at the charts. We're looking at the technicals behind this. We're looking at the fact there's $6 billion in fucking debt. And we're saying, buy the rumor, sell the news. So what do we do? We drop puts on fucking, I think it was Thursday. We're out. No, it was Wednesday. We're out on Thursday with 40% and 22% gains respectively, okay? That is how you get in and get out. And that's what we did. And on I, Tesla, on Tesla? No, no, on AMC. AMC. Oh. Listen, we crushed five different plays last week. So the final play, Sam, final play, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, how we do, he backs up the truck and he loads up Ford. I bought more Ford calls because I fucking love Ford. And, and Neffy? What Ford do on Friday, baby? They pulled out their swinging dick and said, hey, take a look at our fucking F-150 lightning truck. And the thing took off. Went up 7%. I have Ford options that were up like 42% on Friday. No, I man. Up 45. Last week was a party in week. It was every day was a party. And the funny thing was, all I'm reading on uh, the disc, everybody's losing money. 
They're all, and I'm like, how the fuck are you losing money? What are you doing? Because they're all in crypto and they're not fucking spreading out, you know, it's the same thing we preach all the time. You got to diversify. And then what do we say? I'm 100% in Bitcoin. Uh, don't worry. Don't panic. It's the fucking uh, emoji with the fucking dog in the room with a cup of coffee and the place on fire. If you guys are comfortable with that and can ride out these massive swings, do it. That's not me. I'm too fucking old. I want to enjoy my money at some point. And with that being said, with that being said, for the first time in three months, I am looking to unload some calls on the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust this week. I like that thing. That thing is down 50% in about a week and a half. Yeah, Fucking man. I mean, I love uh, it. we've been, you know, obviously we're all texting each other. Evan sent me something very interesting. And it was about uh, these, these whales play games with each other. And they're going after one dude. Evan, you want to talk about that a little bit? You sent us that yeah. video. It's kind of fucking nuts. So there was this post on 4chan. And obviously, oh, God, here we go. Just let, you stop it. Stop, on on stop it. We let right. you guys talk. We let you guys do your fairy dance. Oh, it's let an interesting story. I like it. But it was yeah, on from 4chan. 4chan. Just fucking listen. All right, 4chan. So take it with a grain of salt. I thought it was complete bullshit. But it started making the rounds on, online and stuff. But then this guy, everything he predicted down to the minute came 100% true flash crashes, all these whales selling everything. And they said that they're after this one guy, they say it's not Justin Sun, who's uh, he, he created uh, Bitron and TRX, whatever it is. And they want to liquidate him because he fucked some other whales wife. So they're oh, just oh, oh, apps, dude. Oh, this is the stuff you this, come to cash down. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. This is like the TMZ portion of Cash Daddy. I'm all dude, about that. You dish. He, he dude sent dish. one in some dude's wife and they said, let's take him down. So these yeah. Chinese billionaires are just completely just selling. They're losing some cat. They're literally spending like millions of dollars just to liquidate and bankrupt this one guy. Dude, Allegedly. you don't fuck Chinese dudes' wives, Allegedly. dude. That's a rule. No. So I mean, you don't you don't sink the Chinese pink and think you're going to get away with it. They come oh, after your pink. The Chinese pink. Congratulations they, uh, on naming this episode. <laughs> Sinking the Chinese pink. Sink the Chinese pink. So with listen, all, with all credit, it is an ACDC song. Okay, boom. There you go. So I, uh, my father, when he was a young kid in Niagara Falls, he used to be a paper boy, and there was this one guy that always tipped him really well. So you know, and he was mob. And then my dad would just know, say he was never getting his newspapers. And then like they were piling up and my dad being a kid's going, what's up? Well, they found this dude in his trunk with his dick cut off in his mouth. Cause he banged another mobster's wife. Keep going. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> right. You don't do that, dude. You don't do that. Dude. I have three rules when it comes to hooking up, no kids, no married chicks and no Russian women. Those are the rules. No, wow. It, no, wow. Nothing ever comes out of you bang a guy's wife. Not one good thing comes out of it. You bang a Russian girl. You're going to lose a kidney it's and simple. your pets. She'll kill your pets. Yeah. She'll put your listen, Evan. I know you're going to love that, that they're, they're hot and they're Instagram models. Do you own a dog? Do you own a cat? That cat will die. If you don't put a ring in the finger within like two months. If her name is Pe if her name is Petra. You're going to wake up with only one kidney. That's just yeah, a fact. That's what happens. That's why yeah. Beyonce wrote that song about putting a ring on the finger. I don't remember how it goes, but that's your generation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You Russian yes, woman. You Russian women do not. Don't buy them off the internet either. You send them over here. They just send their cuckoos. <laughs> yep. I'll yeah. steer. I'll steer clear. Yeah, don't Good use a Groupon moment. on it either. You don't want to get discount Groupon <laughs> Russian chicks. All right, back into the 4chan conspiracy. Go. All right, so they said that the plan is – all right, so they said uh, they're going to do a descending triangle down to 35K, and then they're going to drop it. So that's the only thing that has been incorrect so far because it kind of bounced from there upwards. But then this morning and overnight, again, it crashed, and now it's, it went down to like 33, I believe. That's where it is right now. They, they said they're going to keep doing this until this person, and they said it's not Justin Sun, but who knows? Oh, we know it is. And here's yeah. the thing. It's right under our noses. Bitcoin is the sun. Justin is the sun. 
How did we not connect these dots? Oh, earlier? dude, the simulation is nuts, dude. All right, guys, today's episode is brought to you by our good friends at Blue Chew. That's right, Blue Chew. Guys, it's been a hell of a year. And personally, I feel like it, I've aged 12 years over the last 12 months. And if you're like me, you're feeling your age more and more than you used to, especially in the bedroom. It's time to snap out of it and spring in. Spring is here and it's time to sprung with Blue Chew. I totally butchered that, by the way. Blue yeah. Chew, guys, I do. I take blue chew all the time sometimes I'll, I'll i'll smash it chop it up and snort it like real quick chicken. real quick uh i think we should do an episode where we all take a blue chew to start the episode and see how it affects our picks i had a or reader. who gets hard at the weirdest moment how about that one it'll be like me a, i guarantee a boner it'll be chicken me. yeah i like to yeah. play boner chicken with blue chew <laughs> me and my friend will take blue chew and we'll have something weird we gotta do the next day and we like who gets a boner off of blue chew in the weirdest moment you're like i was at church and i was rock hard okay <laughs> It's it not fair with- because Neff has Neff has cats that are gonna jump up and stimulate him. Yeah, well, you know what? Right. You have bums that do the same thing, so it'll be a nice way to even things out, won't it? Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a bl- in a chewable form at the fraction of a cost, dude. That's what we're talking about. Blue Chew tablets help men achieve harder, stronger, f- sassier. In Chris Neff's case, sassier erections. The Does it say queenier? Well, yeah, dude, queen. Hey, dude, we got gay dollar listeners, dude. And you know what? If you bank some fatties, you want to wreck some whole blue chews for, for our gay friends too, buddy. So stop it. All right. Yeah, ab- blue- absolutely and gorgeous Chris Neff's clit. Okay. Blue Chew is an online prescription service. So no visits to the doctor, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. I like the awkward conversations. Well, sometimes. that's why you're a weirdo, dude. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you receive the prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, dude. Don't like to swallow. Some of us, uh, pick which one of us you think likes to swallow. Okay, no problems here. Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Before you go any further, before you go any further, I would like one, but I'd be embarrassed. Is anybody going to know if I order it? No, because it comes in a discreet package, brother. Unlike mine, comes with fireworks and laser light show. Everybody in Valley Village knows it's hammer time, okay? So this is what you're going to do, dude. Everybody needs it. Even Evan, who's in his 20s. You know, you want a boner real hard, or you want a boner that just kind of like a, one of those <laughs> horns, right? Get Blue Chew, even if you're in your was that Was that the fucking Ewok call from Return of the Jedi? That's that fucking weird, <laughs> that ram horn. No, that was, that's when they assemble the Ewoks, what you just did Jesus there. Jesus Christ. So we got a special deal for our, our readers, okay? Try Blue Chew free with, your, with the use of our promo code CASH at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping, okay? That's bluechew.com, promo code CASH, to receive your first month free and we thank blue chew for sponsoring cash daddies so evan basically like we discussed there's no ifs ands or buts this guy has to have a shitload of coin on margin correct yeah so remember last week when he when the last crash happened it went down like 30 percent or whatever this dude doubled down bought like 200 million dollars worth of bitcoin so this this just pissed off the whales even more they said we're gonna keep doing it until this guy liquidates well, the thing is, if that's the situation, they may have to, I don't want to use the word re- reverse pump. They may have to reverse pump this thing down into the teens in order to get this dude called, his margin Dude, calls. get it down to 4,000, please, Wales. Get this thing down to 4,000. That would be awesome. Daddy's buying in. chunks, bro. Fucking chunks. They said they were going to get it down to 20, 25 is their target. And then they're going to pump it to 70 K. I, I mean, I don't know if I believe that the only reason I'm giving this the light of day is because they've got it down to the exact minute of when these flash crashes, flash crashes are going to happen. Yeah. And you, just, you know, Oh, go ahead. No, go on, Chris. Well, as long as we're on this, we do need to bring up the flash crash in bunny, which isn't technically a shit token. It's got a very large market cap. E, why don't you drop in and tell us what happened with Bunny? Because I am holding Bunny. It is the only alt token I have outside of what I consider tier two, two tokens like Matic and Polygon. Uh, why don't you tell us what happened? Because that was a huge story. 
Yeah. So if you didn't, uh, if you didn't see the video I made on TikTok, what happened was this, uh, they called him a hacker and I'm getting a bunch of shit for it because he's not technically a hacker and it's perfectly legal, whatever. But this guy took out several million dollars worth of BNB in a loan. 200 million. 200 million. Correct. So he took 200 million in a loan. What's it called? A flash loan, an instant loan, whatever it is where, and it's DeFi. So you don't need any verification address, none of that. You can just do it. And as long as you pay it back, it's fine. So he took all this money, dumped it into Bunny Token, and that just made the price absolutely go parabolic. It for went about, from one fifty to what two dollars? Well, for first when he dumped it in, it went from one fifty to like two hundred or like one seventy six. Oh and then, yeah, that's right. It went one hundred seventy six dollars. Yeah, yeah. These aren't these aren't holy these aren't, shit. These aren't. This isn't an altcoin with like nine decimals in front of it. This this thing was already trading one hundred and fifty dollars a token. Yeah, and it was at four ten before. But yeah, so he he dumped all this into the market, and apparently the hacking part is where he minted seven more million seven million more coins in circulation. So he minted all those coins, dumped this money into the market, and then one minute later pulled the entire liquidity out of it, made out with about forty two million and five minutes maybe yeah and this thing was at zero this thing went all the way down to zero but here's the best part oh, because shit. he's a stand-up guy he takes his earnings and then says oh here's the 200 million i borrowed i'm giving this back to you but i just fucked you and i'm out and then he drops the mic and everybody's like what happened yeah he paid back the loan to bnb and took the difference between bunny and bnb about 42 million dollars well, so, did you did you see? Can I buy spirit? it at zero? You, no, you can buy it at thirty. I bought it at like twenty eight, and, and then it shot back up to fifty, and it's been hovering between fifty and twenty eight. Well, I it went to seventy. That's right, it did go to seventy. So Here, th- it's a it's a buy. That was a crazy buying opportunity for people who like bought. You could have bought it at fifty cents for about twenty minutes, and it's it went up to seventy one dollars. within a day. My God, dude. And again, it, this is why I mean, you need to. And what you get on pancake? Yep, yep. Ah, and again, I this need to is set why, that up. This is why you guys need to be on the Discord because what happens is, I get a bunch of uh, notifications. Guys, major flash crash on Bunny. Time to buy is now. So if you're connected to the Discord, you're going to get this All kind right. of information. I got to figure out how to set up my fucking pancake dog. Jeez. Yeah, but let's talk about this, Evan. How many people I know guys in New York City this weekend that got their asses handed to them on various altcoins? Talk about the, the dude that came on and basically uh Ponzi 36 million people from everyone, then wrote on the website, yeah. You just got scammed. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, DeFi 100. I quoted this tweet on the Cash Daddy's Twitter that they had however, however much money, like a hundred million dollars, whatever it was. And he just completely drained the liquidity pool, took everything, posted it on the website, basically said, go fuck yourselves. You guys he slapped idiots. a stick on the table and basically said, uh, catch me if you can. You guys are fucking idiots. There's nothing you can do about it. And so it's, again, it's perfectly legal. Yeah. And again, this goes to the DYOR thing we talk about all the time. If you find a coin, you think it's legit. Don't just stop there and buy it. Get on the Discord. Talk to some people. Say, hey, I'm thinking about this. And then, you know... Ultimately, you're still taking somewhat of a, somewhat of a risk. So don't get in with any huge anything. risk. This goes back to fucking PT Barnum. There's a sucker born every day. Yeah, I mean, I, but here's my problem. All this stuff going on, people are still making money in crypto. So even these people, so no, no. Most people are losing. Most people no, are losing, losing in this small time, and they only lose if they pull money, bro. I'm telling you, this shit's going to go back coins. up, man. Buying yeah. the dip. I'm telling you, bro. Buy, buy certain, buy the big ones on the dip. If you're buying I'm these not, small yes, ones. Howie, 100%. If you're going all the way to fucking double anal, and you're, you you, and you're amazed you get fucked, that's you, bro. That's yeah. on you. Yeah. You're playing a dangerous game. Mm-hmm. But I still think we have to watch ourselves because there's <laughs> these things can be done to make us call for regulation, which I think is stupid because I think these little coins are basically poor man's IPOs where you can get in on something early. And the key is not to be held with the bag. That's the key. So if you're going to play this game, you're going to win a lot, but you might lose some too or lose more than you win. But you never know that one win could be a real nice fucking paycheck. So 
I, I think people got really watched themselves because, you know, this whole e- – everything to me is scripted, dude. And it's like Elon Musk pulling all this money out. He probably knew the dip was coming. That's why he pulled his fucking money out. And now everyone's like, oh, they're going crazy. Da, 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 baby pants, right? And it's just like, no, dude, you don't want the government coming in regulating this shit. You have to use your head more than asking the government to save you. All those people got took. You got took. You set yourself up. You were vulnerable, and you yep. played it stupid. Yeah. My personal opinion is, I don't think money ha- people have money to buy the dip right now. I think this crypto fever took off, and it went mainstream. And I don't think people have cash on the sidelines. Well, buy. and that's dumb too. That's what these whales do, and they do it in stocks as well. Okay. They put the rumor out. Everybody sure. sells. They come in. They buy everything up. It's a classic Rothschild play. But Chris has a good point on this, man. A lot of these coins are not coming back, man. They are. You are. You're not getting it. When you got a coin that's down sixty percent a week, there ain't no dead cat bounce for that. That thing's dead. Well, I mean, it. I don't it know. Depends. I mean, like, yes, dude. Jizz platter is probably not coming back. Yeah, that's dead. Hmm. I haven't but heard. But the of that. ones that are on, like, more of your, your, uh, your more, uh popular exchanges these things go up and they go down and what happens is when there's oh oh, dips coming everybody scatters and then it goes shoots back up we'll see we will see it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be very interesting i guarantee matic will be back within two Uh, by the way i bought the dip on matic it's, yeah, it, it's gonna dude, go lower. XRP it's right go now lower. is low, dude. Yeah. If you want to buy XRP, this is the time to do it. Yeah, I think it's gonna go lower. I'm sitting there watching Matic. It's it's where I sold it, eighty three cents. I bought um, it over a dollar, and I'm I don't care. I mean, just diamond hands that. that shit. Hold bro. it for five years. Yeah, yeah, dude. Evan's gonna hold it till he's twenty seven. Well. We'll That's see, how young man. this kid is. We will see. It's gonna be. Evan, how was your week? We've heard how every. I haven't gotten into my week because it was just all it's, nothing but horrors. I mean, <laughs> terrible. Because I'm not a hundred percent in crypto, and my stocks like they're actually not doing too bad. But crypto is just taking a shit on everybody. This is what it's gonna and, happen, man. But um, like I've been doing a bunch of research on crypto and stuff, and there's this guy on Twitter. His, his name is Sam Pepper. I don't even know who he is, but he's got 750,000 followers, and he's shilling these shit coins. Oh, and they so, caught him. Yeah, I was I was doing nothing last night, and I saw him shilling these coins. So I joined this Telegram to this coin, and so you know, joined this other dude's Telegram, and he got paid in Ethereum to shill this coin and he was like it's on pre-sale it's sold out in minutes this thing's gonna explode yada, yada. you have a copy of that screenshot because that was sketchy the way that thing came out yeah. i mean basically they're like can't wait glad to have you on board oh and it's a sign of good faith wink wink what's your metamask address and then he drops it and it's just like you can't trust anybody shilling anything out there um you do How about have, yeah, us yeah. with blue chew well, you can because we have proven results. I've got the cat scratches on my cock to prove them. Go ahead. What does that say? It says, uh, what's your personal telegram? Because he's going to shill this. And he goes, Drew Roberts. All right. Going to add you there. Message you there. For a sign of good faith, what's your Ethereum wallet address? And then he gives him his address. Yeah, That's not sketchy? Jesus Christ. Who leaked but, that? Is that disinformation? We that don't know. On his telegram. Yeah. But do you want to go play that fucking casino? I don't. So, but this coin that he was shilling last night got in at pre sale, sold out at pre sale, ran like 10x maybe, ran 10x, and then the devs rug pulled, got about 400 BNB out of it. Wow. Oof. So, if yeah, you're gonna, a lot of thieves out there, a lot of thieves. If you're going to trust some random schmuck on, the, on Twitter because he has a lot of followers, you're out of your mind. Just get out of shit coins. Get into yeah, the fucking dude. second tier ones. Use your head, man. It's ridiculous. Um, just to give you a, 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 an example of how vol- volatile this shit was, I opened a Binance.us uh, account and I transferred a bu- bought a bunch of XLM. I bought $2,300 of XLM and I was just sitting on it and Binance won't let you do anything for eight days. And so I was just like, all right, I'll come back and I'll transfer it. I logged onto my Binance um, yesterday. That $2,300 had turned into $1,400. That's how fucking volatile the market, the crash was for me. 
that's all. I mean, that's, that's rough. I can't do anything except sit here and write it out. So Hex, Hex is down 35% a week. Gosh. I'm still up. I'm still up. Right. But you've been still in crypto up. a lot longer than us. Yes. Yeah. So guys, today's episode is sponsored by Lucy Nicotine. That's right. Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better, cleaner nicotine alternative. Okay. Finally, tobacco alternatives that don't suck. How great is that, dude? Researchers have developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, pomegranate. All right. Lucy Is it has- long lasting flavor? Because that's my biggest thing. Yeah, it lasts forever, dude. It ne- never is, stops. Won't is it stop like the never-ending gobstalker of yeah, yeah. Gum? Gobstalker, that's what, yes. That's what yes. I'm looking for. Yes, you'll get it, okay? Is Lucy it has lozenges with four milligrams of nicotine that come in three favors. Cherry ice, citrus, and mint. Lucy lozenges and gums are FSA and HSA eligible. So you can use it with your FSA cards to purchase Lucy now okay. hold on you're telling me i can write this off and i don't have to go to target and spend 60 dollars on gum once a week no anymore? bro you can write it off bro i'm in after you bank all these fatties you can write it off okay so here's guys so to our readers okay you want to support cash daddies do this go to lucy.co that's l-u-c-y dot c-o and use the promo code cash to get 20% off all products on your first order, including gum and la juice, okay? Lucy.co, use the promo code CASH at checkout. Okay, I have to read this verbatim, all right? Also, I have to give this disclaimer. Warning, 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 warning. This product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Of course it is. Thank God for it, okay? Because we're grown men, and we don't mind some nicotine. Look at that. I got two right now. Look at that guy. That guy's double fisting his nicotine. You think we're afraid? We're not afraid. We'll Ooh. double fist our li- nicotine here. Bring it. Thank if you. you can figure out a way to put it in a syringe, I will shoot it into my arm. Okay. Thank you, Lucy.com. <laughs> um, and, and there is one other thing I want to say. You know, we bank fatties around here, but we're also able to take our W's. And Howie and I made a play on SABR, a call. Why don't you tell us about our horrible timing on that, Howie? So we, uh, yeah, SABR is a, now it did jump up a little in after hours, but we bought this call on SABR. Stock was trading at like 1350. We bought these 14s out uh, a few weeks. We're still alive. But the bottom line is it's an airplane software. They, they deal with airports. And the software went out the day, the morning after we bought it, the software went out and airlines were like behind schedule for like a day. So basically we bought this thing on a Thursday and woke up Friday and, and the stock was down like uh, four or 5%. Which so, translates to a 50% drop in an option. In an option. So we're down right now. We're down in these options. Now, with that being said, we went out like June 18, I think. So we still have a couple of weeks to uh, to bounce back. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But you don't want negative news like that coming out after you buy an option. Yeah, that's why you don't buy uh, light in the low for still lights. I've been over this. Yeah. It's too risky. But I had a few last week that were just stellar. Hey, guys, stellar. real quick. Uh, hey, do we got new shirts up? I know we had our boy Zoltan made a cool new shirt. Uh, uh, is I don't it up yet? I don't believe they're up yet. I'm going to fight this dude. Go to, uh, go. <laughs> I love Justin. Um, we got to get that shirt up. Uh, go to cash daddy's t-shirts.com and grab your shirts. We got a new, uh, crypto shirt coming out. We're very excited about it and, uh, it should be up today or tomorrow, but by the time this goes out, it will be up. It is a, um, it's a crypto moon, crypto space. Yeah, it's gonna. It's dope. I've seen uh, the, sick. Uh, the initial sick. artwork on it's it. Okay. If you want to see sick. Howie in space, grab this shirt. Yeah. Oh, we have a Discord announcement too. There is a oh, new shit. section. New section. Um, it, it's uh, dedicated to Tommy G. Uh, he's been kind enough to give us uh, a couple f- free plays during the week. So if you feel like you have an itch to do a little gambling, which we're gonna discuss more on Wednesday because we have so many people saying. 
you know, guys, I don't know anything about gambling. Can you teach us? We're going we're gonna to have Tommy on on Wednesday, and we're going to break down some basic um, jargon so you know. But you can uh, access Tommy G's free picks on the Discord right now. Um, so that's a new section to look after. You and him are about to start your own show, but new best you know, friends. How do you know we already have it? Damn, look at link. this, dude. Look at this. There's a new ass in the ass, the ass, the ass, brothers. <laughs> Triple dong daria. How about that one? Okay, so Sam, because you've been in crypto longer than all of us, why don't you tell us what happened to your portfolio? Uh, Obviously, it's not going to be great. But no, we it's very bad. Okay, it's so why don't you bad. give us some highlights? Uh, my Bitcoin took <coughs> deep dickens into the very large figures. Um, I mean, everything across the board. I mean, I'm still doing well for how long I've had it, but I mean, I've lost a lot, a whole lot. <laughs> and a we all know Bitcoin is your largest position, but then why don't you talk to us? Cause we know, I think Monero got split in half almost. Monero got its dick kicked in uh, across the board. Let me B &B. go through my shit. BNB is getting absolutely fucked. Okay, but BNB, yeah, hold on, a timeout on BNB. BNB <laughs> was due for a correction. They were trading around 40 in January and they shoot up to 690. Nothing like that last. I don't give a fuck what kind of market you're in. It was due to correct. But yeah, but it's now 60% in a week. That's my point. That's my point. And I think that's healthy for anything that goes up, you know, eight or nine X in two months. Yeah, I mean, what you're going to find is, and this is the whole thing. There's a lot of scared money and I get it, dude. I get it. There's a lot of scared money in crypto. A lot of people come in, try, put money in, trying to make some smashing grabs. Okay. And when the rumor gets out that there's going to be like a dip, everyone freaks and sells their, their crypto for the first time in a long time, the lows were low. Usually the lows are high. Usually the higher high and the lows are high. This time was the first time in a long time that the lows were low. And that's going to happen. By the way, I got to sneak in my burn of the week just hearing you talk about this. Uh, I can't remember who said it, but they said, don't ever take uh, financial advice from a guy that's got a fridge from 1985 with fake plastic uh, plants on top of it. I thought that was hysterical. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> well, you have a bad sense of comedy. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you have to bring out the uh, hair dryer to defrost it? That's what I yes, want to know. Yes. Uh, the, the one that I'm really getting my dick kicked in on Maker. really bad is Maker. I knew it. Maker uh, is down. It's hemorrhaging right now. I am hemorrhaging. And uh, I'm just going to have to ride this thing, dude. But I'm see, here's have the, to the ride thing. This, here's dude. the thing. I'm oh my God. I'm down so much. <laughs> <laughs> But here's, here's, here's where I think you're okay. Here's where I think you're okay. You are in the sun, okay? And yeah. then you're in the, the next level, the satellites yeah. around the sun. Yeah. What yeah. you're not in is the fucking asteroid belt of shit coins that just is going to get obliterated long term. No, so I agree with that. I'm not in anything that will just, in my humble opinion, disappear. I, and part of me is like, I want to get on pancake to get that dollar. But yeah. part of me is also like, I, I'm an addict to everything, yeah. right? And I'll be, I'll put it in, put it, put, and then I, I'm gonna be down a bazillion dollars. Now here's here's my advice because we've been talking yeah, about everything this. is just eating dicks right now. I mean, everything I mean, is just <laughs> Pac-Man goblin dicks right now. Maker and on that makers, note, makers down a fifty, sixty percent in a month. <laughs> on that note, we are we are G's around here, and we're not afraid to fucking get a little speculative. The channels on the Discord. We had, to, we had to branch off from speculative crypto to what we're now calling rug rats because it is so fucking sketchy. My, what I, my personal take on this is if you want to dabble, okay, in the, in the uh, altcoin world, it, it, don't play more than one at a time, okay? I the think that's thing, great advice. Your the last thing you want to do is track four different things at once that is yeah. already shit. Okay. You, you you don't want your your crypto your all your shit coin crypto to read like the categories on Pornhub, okay? 
You don't want to have like double anal, gang bang, blow bang, come rocket. You don't want to have all that. Go into one way, at a time. You know what my dream job is? And this is one of my best. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> the guy who writes the captions for the Pornhub titles. That would be the best job. All right. Like pool boy drills a double ab. Do you think double, there's you know? a waiting list to get that job? <laughs> Yes, and yes, of course there is, man. That's the no, greatest there's job. No, not. Of yes, it is, Jeff, man. I'm pretty sure you could probably get that job part time next week. I just yeah. like the way I just like the way they're like, mommy takes it in the butt and uh, does a double cream pie and enjoys it. Like they just have to throw on and enjoys it at the end. <laughs> okay. That would yeah. be like the best part of the job. Stevie's first split roasting. That and who is the custodian of records? That would be a great title to have on a business card. Custodian of records at they Pornhub? All, yeah, they always have a custodian of records. All right, so I respect official. that. Great job, Neff. Thanks. I respect that. I respect that. Has uh, our guest come in yet? Nope. Okay. Let me see where he's at. Yeah, so we took beatings, and uh, <clears throat> but in two weeks, we might get it all back. That's a big maybe. No, I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay. Uh, Are we gonna, let's let's boomer. do this. How much you want to bet? A lot. In that two we, weeks? weeks? In two weeks, it's back? Uh, I say within the month. Uh, what, what, all of your $50. Bitcoin. 50 all right, bucks. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. Howie, now, take that bet. you want That's some, free. Howie? That's you want some funny. of Dad's sauce I'll and enjoy it? All right. Here's what we got. Right now, Bitcoin is trading at. 33 and i'm gonna say a month from now it's at 33 or below no 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 uh, hold on when somebody offers you a bet you don't make your situation worse okay what, sorry nap i'll take that you say it's less than 33 <laughs> i take that what was the bet then? How, how i'll explain we, to you i'll explain to you sam you says, are gross in a you month are gross sam says it's gonna be back in a month so what was all it right. at a week ago because i'm gonna get uh, a better bet all right a week uh, ago? Yeah, before uh, the crash, what was Bitcoin at? Uh, so that'd be that 20 now. What? That would be, oh my God. All right, April. 55. Okay, so Sam, I will bet you that 50 bucks that Bitcoin is not back at 55 in a month. Howie, yours is only 33 because you don't know how to bet. Booked. Booked. <laughs> you see what you did? Hey, Howie, Howie, just send my 50 to Nap, please. <laughs> I still got a good feeling about it. I think in a month it might you might see it at 27, 28. I hope it goes down. I hope I lose and it goes down to four thousand. Uh, e, please write these down. My bet is with Sam that Bitcoin is not back to fifty five in a month, which puts us at June twenty third. Howie <laughs> just gave his money to Sam <laughs> and said Bitcoin will not be above thirty three by shut June twenty third. I've been, you know what, Neffy? Here's the difference between you and I. I've been pretty accurate on my predictions over the past three months. Oh, can I on take stocks. the same bet with you? Can I take yeah. the same bet with you? No, I'm not betting anything. We'll, we can bet stocks, but I'm not. I, look, I'll be honest with you. I'm not. I have some Ethereum. I have some of that Rena. Um, but I'm sitting here locked and loaded. Like I'm looking at. I'm looking at buying some maybe more theory, maybe some ADA, but I still think it's going lower. I think it's well, going lower. And you're in a great position because you have powder on the sidelines. You have cash because you've been a smashing. Lot. So, um, yeah, I'm happy for you, man, but you just threw away 50 bucks. All right, we'll see. We will see. Write it down, dude. Write it's it down, down. It's down. You it's have down. everything written down, righty? Okay. Yep. Um, do we do we need to handle any more topical news this week? Uh, be, because obviously, you know, hell, hell was unleashed. Um, Yo, so what are your takes on Eli Musk? He basically knew this dip was coming, right? Billionaires talked to billionaires, pulled out all of his money, and and fucked everybody, right? I don't, I don't know if that's a situation because you got to remember something. By him, by his dumb ass coming out and telling the whole world, hey, look at all the Bitcoin we own. Uh, we're going to put it on our balance sheets and we're going to use it when earnings come into play. 
I don't see how that can help him because, you know, his baby is Tesla. It's not Bitcoin. He, his baby's his company, Tesla. And Tesla has dropped 200 points over the past shit, two and a half weeks. And if this guy could have kept his mouth shut, I don't think Bitcoin probably would have dropped as much to start off. Uh, what Chris and I were talking about is the whole landslide before China came in. China just literally put them right over the cliff. Um, but no, See, I don't think so, man. I think the China thing is blown up because China does this all the time. They make this announcement all the time. But I not this, no, you. this was a big one. This was a big one. <laughs> I know, but I flip flopped on this because last week we said, where does all the blame go? Is it China? And I was leaning towards maybe, you know, 90% China, 10% manipulation. I think it's the other way around. I think this is all market manipulation because China's always been on the back burner. And when you say market manip manipulation, be specific. What do you what do you mean? I'm talking about Elon manipulating the market. Something is going on between him and Kathy Woods because he keeps saying it's bad for the environment. She says it's not, but she holds all of his Tesla. She's the largest holder of Tesla. And then she goes out and buys more Coinbase. And she has the worst reputation of being a psycho on Wall Street. She's made fun of on a daily basis now. Nobody puts any validity in anything she says. So I don't see her manipulating shit. No, I'm saying her and her and Elon have something going on because it just doesn't line up. It doesn't make sense. Do you think I, they're fucking? Maybe, possibly, but here's the thing. Everything gets blamed on China. China has been fucking banning everything for years, man. Yeah, Look, they did Google. the same thing in 2017. They banned Google. They banned Facebook. What the fuck haven't they banned? And they've already talked about we're banning fucking uh, crypto. Yeah, but this when they came out and announced that, that's when this slide started steeply. It really did. I mean, that was the main, in my opinion, that was the main, the main thing. The main catalyst. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, and Sam, if you've ever seen Kathy Wood, she kind of looks like Neff if he cut his hair, if he shaved his head. Oh, <laughs> have we ever seen them in the same place at the same time? Huh? Kathy Wood, is that your name? In, on Craigslist, bud? It probably is. They look just alike. Let's, can you bring up a picture of Kathy Woods? Can I see? Oh, Neff God. This is going to be a meme now, man. You're just setting up these tee shots for these guys. Yeah, um, dude. We I do mean, love the memes, Neff. Nobody loves memes more than Neff. No. She's how, gotten they, so bad. She's gotten so bad that Wall Street. Oh, my <laughs> God. That is Neff. <laughs> hold look on, at hold Neff. on. Look at the one that says approve Kathy Woods settlement. That's the one that's closest to me, right? There. <laughs> She's kind of that, nice. that looks like the fucking uh, uh, terrorist that uh, everybody thought looked like Rosie O'Donnell. Look oh. at that. Dude. There's Chris oh, Neff. Yeah. That's Chris that Neff. Chris. If you got a nice hair. She even has a horse yeah. teeth, dog. Look yeah, at you. Man, look I got at you. Such... A little makeup, a little photoshopping. You're good to go, bud. Chris There's Neff's going to be pumping his wood stocks this week. Listen, There's dude. nothing hotter than a woman with big teeth. I, uh, dude, and if you can throw a little cross-eyed in there, daddy's done. Stick a fork <laughs> in me. All right, so let's welcome our guest. I'm super excited to have him on. I've done his podcast. He's done my podcast. Uh, he's the lead in an awesome band called Hate Breed. Please welcome Jamie Josta. How are you, brother? Good, my friend. How are you doing, Sam? Good to see your face. You're killing the game. Congrats on all the... The rock fence are I'm moving, so I got all this. What crap. is that? Your flashlight? Are you moving it? <laughs> I what what is that? A rug with a dead body inside of it? Yeah, what that, is I that? think that's uh stuff for arts and crafts. Sam, you'll know soon enough. My mine's 22 now, but you you got a little you got a couple <laughs> years until your whole house is filled up with arts and crafts, and then you're gonna have to move and you'll go, We can't throw this out. And we're like, we have to throw this out. Hold on, you wanna see one thing? This why did I keep this for 22 years? Hold on, let's let's look uh, at this one thing. Ready? All right, all right, hold on. So Jamie's in a great band. He's done Tim Fall a bunch of times. Like what is what is it's, that? It's paper mache art that I think she did in the second grade or the third or maybe first grade. I it, get that, dude. I what get are you gonna do? That. I want to keep that, and it's not even my kid. I yeah. kept it. Everybody says I'm crazy for keeping it, but now you, I'm moving, and they say you got to throw it away. Uh, my, so my so fr fridge is full of the worst art artwork from kids that I don't even own, and I'll never throw them out. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do with all those guitars? You gonna throw those out too? 
Yes. No, I'm going to sell them on, uh, I don't know, Facebook Marketplace. We'll see. I'm, no, I'm going to go minimalist. Oh, snaps. Are you staying in New York? Or are you moving? I'm going to have a podcast studio up in Connecticut. Listen, nobody wants to go into New York. They, they just don't. They don't want to go in. I don't know what to do. It's hard booking guests, but then you probably deal with it as well because people want the in-studio stuff. They don't want the stuff on Zoom. Actually, if you look at the podcasts that are in the Gas Digital Studio, they get more views than the ones that are done it's on Zoom. It's kind of weird, right? It's kind of weird. This show's apt because half the guys are on the East Coast, half the guys are on the West Coast, but it is what it is, dude, you know? And sometimes the best you can do is Zoom and they're just going to have to enjoy it, man. I honestly yeah. think this is the evolution of podcasting because I was concerned that we were going to have low quality issues and we've uh, haven't, I mean, it, besides the content that we put out. I mean, yeah, that, that is sucks. low quality dude. God, <laughs> we should replace all of us except better, for though. Evan. <laughs> this, for whatever reason, you're getting better picture and better sound and everything than we get at gas digital. Maybe I got to tell Ralph and Lewis to step their game up. What are you, what are you guys <laughs> wanting? Oh, uh, dude, we're, 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 we're working with the Chinese government, bro. <laughs> They gave us, you get the good one. That's what they gave us. <laughs> it's basically a flux capacitor. We're actually <laughs> using plutonium to fucking make this thing as beautiful. We're destroying as the is. environment, man, but this shit is crystal clear. Yeah. yeah well, so I'm involved Bitcoin. with high, high technology over here in the West Village, Jamie. It's, uh, I have my own like tower right out front. That's why I get this clarity. You got the 5G <laughs> and you haven't, yeah. uh, you haven't freaked out from it yet. I mean, yeah. look at that haircut. He's past freaked out. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so Jamie, man, you know, uh, I hit you up before seeing how you were doing either. You, you always text me like a conspiracy you're into, but then we kind of connected that you're, you're also into investing, man. And I think you're a day trader. You doing some day trading, dude. I do a little bit of day trading, a little bit of swing trading, a little bit of investing and a little bit of crypto. So you don't, you're not into one market you you like to diversify your revenue streams i do and i i was told this many years ago and you know hindsight is 2020 especially when you're getting into music they say don't spend it all don't buy that car don't buy that house with the pool don't fly this you know girl with fake tits to an island or whatever but you need to kind of do that at first get it out of your system and then you think oh well i could have bought this brooklyn building for nine there was a there, literally i'm not kidding you, it was nineteen thousand dollars next to a place that i was it was burnt out it's now sold i think for three million dollars yeah yeah so, but you, you can't take away the the fake tits memories those last for a lifetime yeah dude i yeah. mean that chick's probably now burnt out and look like that burnout place but you know then she was three million dollars not only that but you can't lose your 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 rock star cred by buying yeah. a building yeah hey what are you doing i'm <laughs> flying sarah out and her triple d's out what are you doing i'm buying a fucking homeless shelter right what sounds cooler no seriously they would say to you back in the day don't say certain things in interviews whereas now I think people respect the investor and the guy who didn't blow all his money more, right? Because you don't look at MC Hammer. That was very well Ooh. publicized, paying for the entourage, paying for the houses, for the girls, all that stuff. And then he's the paying. Pants. The Horse pants. thoroughbreds oh. did him in horses. Horses. Was it gambling yeah. or or trying no, to own he, them? He he went rogue and bought millions of dollars in thoroughbreds. He had a horse called Dance Floor that actually came in third place in the Kentucky Derby. But after that, he lost everything because thoroughbreds, it's high, high risk. Uh, you're not going to get any return in the long run. It's, it's basically gambling. And that's where he lost all his money. Yeah. You know what else is high risk? Me admitting that I was the first concert I ever went to. So, uh, God. MC Man, that's a great one to go yeah. to. Yeah. There's way worse, bro. Did what, he sell Emerson, the pants Lake at the merch Palmer? table? Like, could you go and get those pants at the yes. merch? <laughs> yes. You want to see my closet? <laughs> We're not going there. I just made it an admission. You haven't come out of it yet. We're still waiting. <sighs> but look at look at someone like Duff McKagan, though. Got in early on Starbucks, early on Apple, and survived the height of rock stardom, drugs, drinking, all that, and is it like one of the best people I've ever met. And you go, okay, how did you, when I had him on my, sh my show, I said, how did you do this? He said, well, we audited the label. We had to, you know, learn accounting. He literally left music to learn accounting and then got back into music knowing accounting. 
he's a smart dude, man. Like he's yeah. he's made a lot of good moves. Yeah. For sure. Uh, yeah. He's, he's like his one of the doc. guys I look to. Catch his doc if you haven't seen it. It was amazing. Yeah, his book's great too. But I, so- I've been thinking like him. Okay, what's the next Apple? What's the next Starbucks? And there's a lot of people that will say, okay, it's the EV sector or it's um, biotech or it's what's the other one now that everyone's starting to talk about? FinTech. Um, what is it? FinTech. Yes. What is, yeah, what is FinTech? FinTech is basically electronic payments. I mean, that's kind of what it originally started out, like the PayPal's, things like that. It's kind of morphed into something bigger than it is now. Uh, Howie could probably answer it better than I am. I mean, what would you consider like a hot FinTech play right now? Um, I mean, really, it's, <laughs> it's, your, it's, your girl, it's all your girl, Kathy Woodstocks. Yeah. Pretty, uh, much, pretty much all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And she's kind of being mocked right now. <laughs> But will it, but so was a lot of people who right was the saying first you're mocked, then you're whatever, then you're they respected, laugh you, and then you win. Well, she was actually she was actually respected, highly respected for years at first, but then when all these things started tanking and she just continues to double down on them, people just want answers like why are you buying more and more? Two things are going to happen. She's going to come out of this thing looking like a genius. Or you'll probably never hear of her again. Right. Because what happens to the ones that they just keep buying the dip, buying the dip, and then it goes to zero or it just never pans out. That's right. That's a and that's what literally what she's been doing on Coinbase for the last two weeks. And it scares me every time I look, but uh, I've got a lot of faith in her. I've been holding her ARK-K and ARK-W for a long time. And uh, I like the returns on them long, long term. Even if you they, like her they, just because you look like her, man, that's all <laughs> the only reason you like her. She looks like your fucking twin. You're not wrong. Yeah. Here's the thing hey, about Coinbase. I think she, I think she looks pretty good. I mean, if we're gonna be if we're gonna be those assholes, thank you, Jamie. Show, thank you, Jamie. Talking about the way a woman looks in the Listen, investing world. I mean, we, Jamie's we probably gotten so much ass that a fucking a trans <laughs> is fucking just exotic to him at this point. So let him have his shit, okay? Um, here's the thing: a Coinbase. If any of these these exchanges are going to do well, it's going to be Coinbase. It just is because they're the only ones that for some reason banks will use. I mean, I've been told like you can call up and be like, go at crypto.com. But as far as I know, Chase has told me, oh, we don't do that crypto. But for some reason, they working with Coinbase. I, I feel, and Chris has said this before, that the sell off is happening. It's going to go back up. I, I We're just going through this turbulent time. I, I Listen, if you want to get out, get out. I totally will respect that. But I do think crypto is going to have a bounce back because this isn't the first time that it's cr- gone down. It's this is what happens. And I, I, well, I think also with Coinbase, originally I thought I'll just buy in at 150 bucks. And I kept looking and I kept looking and I was like, you know what? It's down to 310. I'm going to start at 310. And I bought, I think, five shares. Then it went to. 290 and i was like all right no problem and i bought i think another uh five shares then i said you know what i'm gonna it went to 280 81 i think it was i'm like i'm gonna dump it i will buy back in at 150 sometimes you just have to dollar cost average yeah that's that's the fucking neff's got that fucking tattooed on his tramp stamp yeah, dollar cost average and volume uh, confirms pricing. Those are the things you always. Uh, hey, I'm. Like, but if you Jamie, look at the Jamie, two of them, who Kathy and me? No, if you look at well, you could do that too if you were having a bad day. <laughs> but I mean, if you look at both Coinbase and you look at say the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which you're actually you can buy that. You can buy the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, and you're actually buying uh, cryptos. You're buying like a crypto fund, the big ones. So if you're thinking like Sam does, that this thing's good, I think that's a better buy than Coinbase. My yeah, thing with Coinbase is this. Uh, they charge pretty high funds. And at some point, if you go back the last 100 years in any kind of transactional business, especially with you know the, the brokerage business, back in the day, if you wanted to buy a uh, thousand shares of Ford, you'd pay a $500 commission. Now you do it on Fidelity for 10 bucks. I just think there's going to be other companies that come in and compete with Coinbase that eventually take them out. That's my feeling. I like the gray 
great scale Bitcoin trusts. Because look, if you like Ethereum, if you like Bitcoin, that's what you want, man. You can buy it safely right but through the your problem, broker. But the problem is you're not paying dollar for dollar on that. You know, the, 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 the broker is taking, taking a cut. And to my knowledge, Grayscale gets their BTC from Coinbase. So my feeling is why even bother with the middleman on that? You're business. not, you're not, you're not because they have so many of them. It's almost like it's, uh, it's, it's like an ETF to GBTC. So Chris, if it's trading at $30, you can go on your uh, Charlie Schwab account and you can buy it for 10, 15 bucks. That's it. I feel like just go to the source and buy your own BTC. Oh, right? because you, don't need to. you can buy fractional. Oh yeah. You can okay. buy fractional. Yeah, see, I use TD Ameritrade, <laughs> but I was thinking about that when I first bought the Coinbase stock and then I was buying cryptos on Coinbase. The user, the interface and the, just the user experience is way better on reg, the regular Coinbase app than it is on Coinbase Pro. 100%. And I feel like that's why people stay with it because I know a lot of people that just buy and they pay the fees rather than sit there and monitor certain coins on Coinbase Pro because a lot of the coins that you want to get on Coinbase Pro are not even available on Coinbase Pro. And then if you're using the mobile app and you're trying to time it right, say you want to buy a dip and then you want to buy a little more when it dips further, um, like I sold, I bought a bunch of Tezos and I, I, I had them on Coinbase pro and Coinbase, but I was trying to time my out and <coughs> I got out of it at a pretty good height. And I just bought back in and I said, fuck it. I made enough where I just did it on the regular Coinbase app. And I just kept everything on Coinbase pro and I didn't fuck with it because it's, it's so hard to use. And if you're a no novice trader, in cryptos, just the experience is so easy. And you can see right when you click on it, okay, I paid this much. It's now at this, let me sell for this amount of profit and reinvest. Gotcha. Yeah. And see, that's why I think they're going to succeed is the interface is so easy to use. It's first to market and it's first to the public market. I, like I said, I would not sell Coinbase right now. Um, I you better not. You bought it at three fifty. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But are you are you averaging down? Are you buying every dip? No, I haven't bought every dip. Um, I I bought three times, uh, but I do hold a, a high average. Um, I think my average is three forty right now. Um, but I wish I, we could do. I wish we could do an analysis of if where I should buy to see what I would have lost if I stayed at that average of whatever it was two two ninety nine or. Um, when I bought the first dip, because if it goes to 150, is that a better? Uh, yeah, if it goes to 150, that's kind of when you want to load up the truck. Like if you bought five shares at 340, and you buy 10 or 15 shares at one, man, that brings your average way down, and then you're in the ball game again. Just one thing to consider, Jamie. It was trading for 250 um, on the on the private market before it IPO. I don't think 150 is a possibility. I think uh, high high 180s, 190s is where you're going to see the absolute bottom. So I, this is just me. I don't think you're going to see 150 on this. Okay, so 150 would be those early investors panicking and then it causing it to go there. Which yeah, the the important thing to remember is this: this was a direct listing. This wasn't a traditional IPO. So there was no lockup that the, the, the shareholders had. So it's perfectly normal for investors to take massive amounts of profits, let the thing drop, and then buy back in. I, I, I just don't see, see this going to 150. Howie sees it the other way. Yeah. Uh, I've got some actual side action that it's not going to see below 170 until the end of the year. But um, it, again, it really depends on what crypto does. A lot of people think Coinbase is going to trade directly in correlation to Bitcoin. I don't believe that's true because I think Coinbase has a massive user base and I don't think they're all buying Bitcoin. So it's going to be interesting to see after this dip. Uh, well, we you could, could, you're not mentioning the biggest thing. The reason I think it could go to 150 and it may not, but I think it could is because the NASDAQ overall, the NASDAQ, the QQQ is still trading at almost 13,500. 
if the NASDAQ does get corrected, which many people think it will, and that thing goes down to 10, 10,500, Coinbase, you're going to see it at 150. You're going to see everything down 30, 40%. It has not going to have anything to do with the stock fundamentally. It's just going to be tech stocks across the board. So Yeah, but you're talking about a massive correction. That would be a legit 18% correction in the NASDAQ. Which, that's, that's not huge. It's significant. Man, I mean, go not... back go back to March 23rd of 2020. That would be the equivalent. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think it probably will happen at some point. Um, and if that does happen, whether it's in September, October, whatever, then you will see Coinbase at 150. So now, how, do you, the... how do you change like the sentiment of your audience and say, like after this little crypto dip, which I guess it wasn't little, it was pretty, pretty big. Like, how do you, how do you... How do you look at it to the point where, like, say, for instance, Matic, I'm still buying the dip on Matic because I like it, it long term. I bought it yesterday. I, I bought more this morning. And now what I'm did thinking. did you get it at real quick? Did you get it at 80 cents? 89. Okay, you're good. I bought it at 110 either yesterday or I think or the I day bought before. it at 30. I bought it at 33, but then I sold it at 83. <laughs> okay, yeah, see. My buddy, we call him Mike Matic now. He was Mike Profits because we were going to start a show. I was going to be Crypto Jim and he was going to be Mike Profits. But I said, why don't we do Crypto Jim and Mike Matic? But he's probably sweating it today because he had you bought it. I should start think. a show, man. We need more of these shows, dude. So we all get each other's help each other grow. We do. And I think we need more people holding and not being such bitches when these dips happen because yes. every rich person I've ever met in my life, and I've met a lot of fucking rich people. I worked at MTV. I've been on major labels. I was on Universal Records. You know what they do when, like, when a record label is going under? Do you know what they do? They wait. They don't buy. They wait till all the employees are fired and they're about to literally throw all the copies of some record in a dumpster then they scoop in at the very bottom and they buy the 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 titles that are worth something long term and everything else goes in the dumpster and i've been thinking about that now like when when you when you hear because i just heard a little hardcore punk label was going under and i thought oh i'm gonna buy the whole thing and and then I heard about a podcast network going under and I and it's not even a big network. It's a smaller, more kind of underground network. But I told uh, Lewis and Ralph this and, you know, what they you know what Ralph told me. He goes, why? I'll just I'll just wait for, you know, them to just completely go under and then I'll just take the one show that I want. And I'm I'm like, oh, that's I need to apply that to the stock market. Yeah, Wait there's a very for... famous line that Buffett uh, is quoted as saying, the stock market is a device to transfer money from the impatient to the patient. And that totally applies to what you're saying. Yeah. And so either, is there an ethical way to do it? Is there, a, is there an ethical capitalism out there? I don't know yet. I'd like to. But if, if, if a label or a podcast network made bad decisions and didn't push the talent to the forward, that's... Th and didn't do the right thing. That's not going to matter. Just like you just said, it's, it's might not be about the bit, the fundamental business. It could be about just the overall climate and fear and the yep. overall drop of the market. And that's when you need to strike. And I think yes. this, and yep. I think this, this opportunity right now that we have with um, Chili's and with Matic and with um, I, I just bought more of a, uh, I think it's OXT this morning. And there's another one I bought, uh, Maker. I loaded up on Maker on like the fourth Listen, dip. Listen, dude, I bought Maker real high. I sold it. Then I bought it real high because this guy was talking about Ethereum hitting 10, which I still think it could do. But Maker always does better than Ethereum. Always. Always. So I'm holding it. I diamond hands this shit, man. I diamond hands this shit. Uh, I have a couple cryptos. If they got really big, I would sell them. But most of my my crypto, I'm holding until I could turn it into something physical. And that's for me because I, I got in so early the crypto. I mean, it would literally have the bottom would have to fall out for me to lose all my money at this point. 
But to the listeners, dude, yeah, man, I get it. You guys buy, you're trying to up your, your bank account. I get that. You know, a buddy of mine, Bobby, he, he gets in, he sells, he, you know, he, he banks some fatties and I totally respect that, but it's like, you have to be willing to diamond hand some of this shit because yeah, yeah, you'll lose a little. It's like, it's like you only lose when you sell, right? Sometimes like I'll buy a stock. Like I bought, I bought Coinbase, right? And I mean, just get my dick kicked in on it, but I took it and I put it into Endeavor and I'm still up. I haven't lost that money yet. That money isn't officially lost until I pull it out. I will get back into Coinbase because I believe in it in the long run. Right. But I'm, I mean, I was hemorrhaging a couple grand on that thing. So, but with these other coins, I'm still up, man. There's a couple that I'm down, but for the most part, on average, I'm up. And I think you just got to ride this shit. I know that again, at the end of every month, people sell because they got to pay their bills. But I think in the long run, you hurt yourself. That's yeah, just time, me. Time in the market equals money in the market. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And you don't want it. You know, and this is a huge mistake rookies make you never want to sell when things get bad you want to buy on bad 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 news you want to sell when that shit's at 65 66 now everyone's like yeah bitcoin's going to 500 maybe take a profit then then you could be buying back right now today always buy on bad news that's that's just that's how you make but if we go if we go back we need to realize that you can't buy on bad news if you don't have powder on the sidelines because you blew your wad on buying That's a right. dip. That's, That's why right. I never- So much going everything. on in that statement. If you got yeah. powder on the <laughs> sideline, you're blowing wads. So yeah. Throwing so, some big so tits for, too. So for listeners who say have a thousand bucks, because I get asked this a lot, uh, especially from musicians who have been out of work for a while, tours, touring's now coming back and it's a good opportunity. Like if you had a record coming out and you just got your advance, this is a good time. This is kind of like how stocks were in March of last year where you could get, I mean, I bought Hanes just strictly on the fact that I thought, okay, I love, we print a lot of the shirts on Hanes. They own champion. I, every, every hardcore and punk band and metal band is printing on champion. I just like the business as a whole, I'm going to hold it for a long time. I'm up 60% now in a year, over a year on Hanes. And I use it. I use occasionally I cash out and I put that money on the side because that 60% is what I'm going to play around with. Now, of course you got to pay taxes on that. And, and I, I had this sort of, sort of same take on, uh, on Bitcoin originally it was like, it was like my ATM. I would only take out what I wanted to reinvest. Or if I had, I think I, I one time I fucked up. I sold at forty eight thousand when it was at like fifty five and it dipped to forty eight. But now that was a great decision because I just bought back in a ton at thirty three or whatever. So that's another thing I try to tell these kids that are asking me like, yeah, if you're going to fuck up and you're going to fear sell a couple things here and there. But you learn from that when you get the opportunity to buy back in. Uh, at a lower cost and average down or just start over. Right. Because you're, you've like at that, when I did that Bitcoin transaction, that five grand that worth that I sold, I was still up because I bought it like 21. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is now if, if these kids are coming in and you bought Matic today, think about the long term. Don't, and then if it goes to 15 cents or whatever, the, whatever, what's the low, what's the lowest it could go on Matic? What do you think? Oh, uh, right now, Technically, it could go, I mean, technically, zero. Any, zero. I, mean, I don't think it could go zero. It, I mean, it could. I mean, if you, theoretically, that's my, what I'm answering. Well, <laughs> probability, no. Theoretically, Stop sure. Pissing could. on my fucking birthday. But, but you would then have, if you kept some of that money on the side, you would then get so much more bang for your buck. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Which is, you know, I did that. I'm doing that right now with Hylion, um, uh, you know, because I think hi, everybody's shitting on Hylion. People hate Hylion. They it's, but yeah, you would hate it too. If you bought it at $40. Yeah. Well, you know, Jamie, when I, when I actually worked on wall street for a firm, I actually had quite a few musicians as clients 
And the one thing they all had in common, it was, you know, when they got paid, sometimes it was every three months, they would just have a big check all the time. They'd come back from touring and say, what do I do with this? I said, well, first of all, you know, whether it was 150, 175,000, I said, you gotta pay taxes on it. Secondly, set up a SEP IRA for yourself. It, this is your business. Every musician, that's their own business. I don't care if they're with a band or what. They have to have their own business set up so that they can put this money in there and it grows tax deferred. They can invest whatever they want. And I used, it used to amaze me at some of these guys that didn't have IRA set up. They didn't have any sort of tax deferred annuity. And, you know, you don't have a retirement account. You don't have a pension. So that's what I used to do with a lot. And I used to just try to set these guys up. And uh, it was some of the stuff they invested in. It was just, oh, my God, un unbelievable. Just failed restaurants, car washes, just crazy shit that just didn't pan out. So that's the first thing I would tell people if they had extra money. Look, man, make sure you got an IRA. Hold on. Yeah. So I think that the initial thing that you were going to say jamie is like if you had a thousand dollars right oh yeah sorry i went off on a tangent there that's fine what would you do with the thousand dollars okay so what i did was i kept i think 400 on the side and i bought in incrementally and i waited for dips on highly on i bought at 17 and people were like you're crazy and i i didn't buy a lot I think I bought uh, maybe, I don't know, five or 10 shares. Then it went to 14. And then I was, they were like, all right, back up the truck, load it up. So I bought more. Then it went to 10. And I was like, all right, this is crazy. Then it went to eight. Now I'm just loading up. Anytime it goes below eight, I'm buying more and more and more. The, the other ones I had, like Ford, I sold on Friday because I bought it back in March of last year when I, I think I bought it for eight bucks, bucks or nine yeah. bucks. Yeah, it's eight or nine. And we, we, yeah, we crushed Ford last week. We so uh, had a bunch of options on it. You did? Yeah. That's so, why I've been pushing Ford for the past two months on this show. I mean, it just, and I think it's going higher right now. I hope it drops back at some point. I could like to buy more. Same. I, I, I didn't want to sell, but I was losing so much on, uh, Palantir, which kind of yeah. came back a little bit. Yeah. And then I was losing a ton on workhorse. And so I sold some <clears throat> Ford to buy some workhorse thinking, okay, if Ford was at eight bucks last year or nine bucks workhorse being at eight or nine uh, is not that scary because in five years, workhorse could be yeah. at 13, like Ford is now. Right. Yeah. Ford had a hell of a day on Friday. Here's my yeah. take on Palantir. Set it and forget it. It's going to be a, an Apple type stock. It's going to be a Microsoft. It's not something you want to buy options on. It's a great company. They're juiced in with the government, with their contracts. Just, just pretend like you don't even own it. Don't even look at it. I treat it literally like an IRA. I don't look at it. I'm holding long. I'm a little bit down on it, but I, I, I bought it at 25, sold it at 37. I've made enough money on it that I'm not concerned about it long term. It's a great company and it's not going anywhere. Yeah. See, I see. I just wanted some of that profit from Ford to just buy more just to average down just because I think I, I bought it 25 too. And then it was it went to 19. I bought a, a bunch more at 21. I want to say it was at 1935 or something recently. And I bought another whatever, 10 or 20 shares. Well, yeah, I just let me sold my PLNTR uh, Friday. Uh, how much? Quite a bit, man. Quite a bit. So you bought in early. Uh, I bought, no, I actually, I bought it at 25 and it had a nice jump. I actually sold some calls in it, which I was down in, but those will be tax losses against the Ford, which was beautiful. Um, and, you know, I, I sold some Tesla calls last week. We sold some AMC puts that we bought. Um, so, but I took a, I took a little beating on PLNTR. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. Hey, JB, real yeah. quick, because um, we're always asking this question. It's the question I ask every guest that comes on the show, because we have so many new listeners that are younger and in the crypto sphere. What is your ratio that you hold in equities in the stock market to the crypto universe? I'm a little bit lower in crypto, not by much, maybe 15%. And that was because I took profits out of some of the 
the uh, ones that I was just, I mean, normally I take profits at 15%, but I was riding Haynes, riding Ford, riding, um, uh, I think it was American Airlines. I got it like something crazy, 18 bucks, and it went to 22. Now, that's not it's not huge, right? It's not 100 percent gains, but 15 percent. I start to take some off the top and then I would put some into cryptos that I liked. But again, the user experience and the and not being super knowledgeable about crypto, I always factor in those fees. And I factor in um, just my time. That's another thing because I don't want to be constantly logging in and looking and trying to monitor where I think that that pressure is. If yeah, you don't want it to take over your life either. And on, on that note, you obviously are a pretty active trader. Do you have a separate account, like a retirement account that, or a financial advisor that handles uh, another portion of your money or are you managing all your money on your own? I'm right now I'm managing it all on my own, but I'm interviewing people because I want us this place that I'm moving to. I want to have a little area where my, me and my nephew do some investing and some trading stuff. And I want to have, I think it's important for people who learn in different ways. I know there's all different sort of diagnoses now, but I think a lot of creative types like myself, we were probably undiagnosed as um, having some sort of a deficit disorder uh, with attention, with math. Like I'm so, I was good with math, but not good with accounting, good with um, running a record label. If it was something I was super passionate about. So I'm trying to foster with my nephew, this feeling of like, buy now for later on which i didn't have i didn't have someone telling me buy that building in brooklyn for 19 grand and just let it sit don't look at it and my nephew we've uh we listened to an investor call for i think it was clove c-l-o-v or we listened to an earnings call something with they, they were talking about this one on twitter i didn't really like it at first it seemed like a pump and dump but now he bought in so low where he was up the other day and we had to sell some same thing on GameStop. We bought in so low and I thought, okay, I sold at 90. He sold at 140 something, but he bought it for like $4 or what Amazing. it was so low where he bought it. But this is him going on Twitter, going on uh, wall street uh, bets. Yeah. Going on Reddit and, and, and us talking about it. And so, I want to have a space where we can go together and have, I guess we could make it into a little business, like a little, uh, you need your own hedge fund. We were, we were joking about it. We we're like hardcore hedge fund. Let's start it right away. Let's do, let's hardcore do hedge it, fund. dude. Let's all. Yeah. And yeah. It, we, we've been talking about our own hedge fund around here as well. And, uh, also buying a horse and naming it cash daddy. So if you're speculative <laughs> yeah. and you're interested, we are going to be working on that in the next year. Um, so, well, when I when I made the the first batch of cash off GameStop, and I sold at ninety, and I thought, I mean, that was so nerve wracking. So, so did I. I I was. I that's was a like, great like, profit. That's a great profit. Yeah. No. It, and and it, and it it paid for a lot of stuff. It did, and it was great. And I'm I'm so. You never want to sell too early, but then. It's like you live and you learn, right? You 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 look at the charts, you see, okay, there's a ton of pressure here. There's a ton of um, buying action here. You don't want to buy at the top. And my nephew thinks about things differently. He's he goes this younger generation. They don't look at the things the way that we do at all. And they like he told me about Foot Locker. I was like, no way. Who's buying? Who's going to Foot Locker? But then I looked at the price. And I, I looked at the chart. I called my buddy up. We went in. We looked at, okay, this is what news happened at this point where people sold and how many people bought here. And so I bought in. And next thing you know, I'm up like 40% in a matter of months on Foot Locker because my nephew is like, you don't understand. Kids want to go to Foot Locker. The business is, is it's never going away. The experience, the whole thing. And 
he I got to say he was right. I would have never called that one. Sneakers too. Sneakers are exploding. Yeah, people yeah. want I don't I want one pair of shoes. That's it. I don't want I don't want but people want an entire wing of their place filled with shoes. I'm not that person, but I want to make money off that person. That's right. Absolutely. Hey, so guys, let's do this, man. Uh, because this is, uh, I got a jam in a few. Can we get into our picks for the week? What do you guys like this week coming up? Uh, why don't you go heady? Uh, I'm going to go heavy on BTFD by the fucking dip. And, um, <laughs> that's all I got. That's the only only pick. I'm, I'm with do. you, Evan. I I you know what, man? I, I have faith. I've I, I've been in this game for a long time. This ain't my first rodeo. This ain't my first bucking. Okay, I see this happening, and I see the dip going up, dude. So I I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, I think it's a good time to buy. If anything, best time. Uh, when you say buy XRP, the dip, dude. I'm yeah. telling you, man. They're t- I, the, the streets are talking, man. And you all can hate me on XRP. Get on uphold. It's the way in the United States you can grab some XRP. It is super low here. My friend Craig, who is like a guy I get a lot of crypto from, he's a cu- crypto pirate. He's like, diamond hands that shit, dude. Ride that shit. Buy XRP on the dip, man. I know it's the banker's coin, but guys, the bankers like to make money. They're setting this thing up. They're setting it up to be the, the fucking bank's crypto. Grab where, that where, shit. Where can you buy it? Uphold. Uphold. Okay, so I I was, I was sold. I forget where I sold it at, but it, I sold on the bad news. I didn't sell all of it. I still have a bunch of it on Coinbase, which I'm still up on, but I can't trade it on Coinbase, correct? Correct. You, no, it'll ma'am. sit there until they relist it, to my knowledge. But you can't trade it. But hold it, dude. Hold it. I'm telling you, man. It's coming, dude. News is coming, dude. They're they're positioning this thing. This has been the play the whole time. This is going to be the banker's coin. Well, I like I like uh, Mara and Riot this week. And if it goes lower and lower, I'm just gonna I'm gonna wait and see and buy it. And I think Bitcoin's going to come back and they're going to run with Bitcoin. And I've already made a bunch of money off them. I made a little bit off of Ebon and SOS too, if anybody's into those. Yes, we have been. Uh, um, and I stay away from Naked. I stay away from um, NAK. I do like some of the EV plays. Like I, I sold Aero, but I thought, you know what, if sports come back, if music venues come back and people start using those, buying up uh, those like little carts, golf carts style venues, uh, vehicles for these venues, you know, they don't want to be pumping gas in them, charge them up. The next thing you know, the next warp Tour or the next Mayhem Fest will do some sort of deal with a company like that. Um, I think I bought at 350. I sold at eight. Um, Jamie, take a look at Block amplify it's an etf uh they hold mara and riot it's something that you might uh, be interested in just to hold and not worry about looking at because it's uh an actively managed etf that has those holdings within it right on i will and uh the other ones i'm looking at to buy more of this week is zynga z-n-g-a and this is not financial advice don't listen to me ever do your own due diligence uh, but I like that, and I like Jumia, which is like uh, Amazon, African Amazon. Yeah, yeah. and I've been I, I bought it on the dip now or a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, and I'm up like already seven eight percent on it. Yep, it's a great it's a great company, and it's got a lot lot of room to move. I agree. Howie? Hey, the only stock I'm going to push this week as far as pushing it and buying it maybe for the long term is DraftKings, D-K-N-G. DraftKings was at 76, 77 and absolutely got blasted. Uh, It's trading at 44.60. It looks like it's probably going to pump back up to 61, 62. Uh, I like that a lot. As far as you guys on the Discord listening, listen to us again this week because I'll be posting every options play that I buy or sell, whether it's calls or puts. Chris and I are going to do something this week with Airbnb uh, for sure. Yeah. uh, Because that thing looks like it could bust up uh, and we can make a 
short term term grab on it. Um, not only that, but we have summer reopening. That's our thesis. Yeah, uh, the stock's been pounded, and not only that, it's a great company, and it's got so much growth potential. We'll can do I, something can I with ask that. You a question and, about DraftKings. Yeah, go ahead. When you say going back to sixty one, because I think I bought at fifty three. Based on your TA, is that because of um, a ton of buyers sitting at 61 that are holding? Actually, it's it's I'm looking at the chart and it's 61. That's where it looks like technically it has the most amount of resistance. Um, in other words, if you, I, I'm looking at a three month and a six month chart on it, and it looks like it has quite a bit of resistance right around 60, 61. No, and I think it'll go from 44 and hit that and then probably stay there a while, maybe build another base and then break through. Um, that's why I'm going on it, just on the chart. Okay, yeah, because because at one point it did break 80, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it just uh, – it, it took a beat down uh, starting in, what, March. Started just going straight down. It, I mean – it was trading at uh shit. It was trading at seventy four thirty eight uh, back in March, um, so it hit seventy four thirty eight, um, and now it's trading at forty four sixty. Uh, but it looks like it's building a little base here. It's kind of it kind of hit forty one forty two. Uh, it's been here pretty much for the last week and a half, two weeks. So I think I, it's headed back up. I bought a little more at forty four. And I do like it long term. I, I wish oh, yeah. now I held MGM and Golden Nugget. I, I, I just took profits. I started worrying once because they, they kind of moved uh, with DraftKings for a little bit there. Yeah. And those have done well. Any of the casinos done really well. Yeah. So. But I like that. I like DraftKings, too. That's a good yeah. one. If, if for you would do that as a swing or you hold and, and hope that it would go back to 74. I think I would probably, I mean, look, at if you, if you buy it now and that thing does go up to 61, I mean, there's a solid 25% profit. Um, who knows? I mean, you could probably sell it and maybe buy it back oh. because it may bounce off that 61 a couple of times and head back down. You could buy it back. So, yeah. 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 I like that too. Yeah. Um, it's me, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've already told you guys I bought the Matic dip and I bought it yesterday at 110 and I'm looking at a 29% uh, regression since then. I don't give a fuck. I think it's a great company. You're never going to time the dips. Um, so I'm happy with that. I will be playing the A, B, and B calls with Howie once we firm everything up. I do have some inside info from the Wall Street Grinch. Uh, Jamie, uh, the Grinch is one of our insiders who comes on the show. And uh, he's put us in some plays we've been really happy with. And he does have a FinTech play that I already hold. And he's uh, advising to buy more of. It's called FinV, F-I-N-V. It is a Chinese loan transaction company. Uh, according to him, they're going to crush earnings on 525, which is Tuesday, I believe. And he's also uh, telling us to take a look at SMMT which is Summit Therapeutics. Um, basically, word on the street is they're, uh, they're going to be sold by management. Um, he was offered a, a rights offering and got shut out. This is my friend, or our insider, The Grinch, uh, because the CEO wanted to up his stake to 70%. Uh, Steve Cohen, I don't know if you know him. He's the hedge fund guy that uh, based uh, the HBO show Billions was based on. Um, he was fined uh, like something like a billion for insider trading, and he just bought 6.68 million shares at eight dollars. So wow. I'm looking at this stock right now, and I'm saying, holy shit, it's gone from eight to 14. No, excuse me, uh, it's gone from five four five dollars and 48 cents to 8.42, and I said that's a massive increase since you know may 7 may 14 and he said it's still a buy so i trust my inside information i trust the grinch so i'm going to be getting into summit therapeutics and i already hold finvi that chinese fintech company i was telling you about he thinks they're on a a, a crash course to just smash earnings on tuesday 
So you might want to wait to see if uh, what the movement's like if they come in with those solid numbers, because there might be a regression again. Playing also, yeah, because that, that stock's actually had a huge jump in the last week. So is that because it's already factored in because earnings are going to be great? There's the question. And again, yeah. um, I'm looking at SMMT as a long-term hold and FinV as well. And I'm already up like 20% on FinV. But if you want to look at those two, those would be my suggestions. And one other question, I know we got to go, but Jamie, I got to give you a shout out. One of my best friends who goes by Counterfeit Clown a uh, huge UFC fan wanted me to give you a shout out for um, writing Matt Brown's walk up music. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta do the podcast with Matt Brown again. We're, we're bringing back fight buddies, the podcast. I just had Robin black on uh, la uh, two weeks ago. We watched, we were going to do an episode today, but we had to cancel it, but I'm bringing the, the fight buddies podcast back and I'm working on a new theme song for someone. I can't say who just yet, but uh, I've done Arlovsky. I've done Shane Carwin. Anderson Silva. No, I wish. Is the spider coming back? Chuck we... <laughs> Bring him back and do Thriller, right? Yeah. I'd watch He's too it. old for that. I You'd went watch, watch it, him right? at the forums, dude. I, I enjoyed it. I'll watch two hookers fighting on the corner. I'll, 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 any any yeah. any fighting is. Sounds is, like a Saturday night for Howie. Um, Can I ask you? Yo, guys living we... where I am in the West Village right now, I'm seeing. No, 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 dude. Day, man. You guys want grit, man. You guys want grit. You go to Hollywood Boulevard Friday and Saturday night, dude. It is like New York City in the '70s. It yeah. is the best. You just people watch chaos, dude. Yeah. Remember bum fights? Did you remember that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do I? Do, Do now I? imagine if they came out with that now, they'd be canceled. They'd be like, you're. Uh, you know, yeah. That was. I, that, it's crazy though. Sam's right. That's my old neighborhood, you know, uh, Sunset La Brea. I hadn't been up there for like five years and I walked by happy endings. That old place used to, we used to watch UFC at, I mean, literally mattresses out on the street, people openly smoking meth on the street and the cops just walking by him. And I'm like, it's, this glorious. is insane. This is like the zombie apocalypse. And they're just, I meeting. love it, dude. I have my one I podcast. I just do. I walk my dog every night through there and just like I every night I have a story of chaos, whether it's black trans fighting in fucking dildo shops, naked chicks just running down the street like and just dudes following her like she's the Pied Piper. It's just it's it's the best, dude It's like it's taxi driver, bro. Dude, that's why I just start an Instagram that's account Christopher like Street Subway Creatures. Right now. It's crazy. Yeah, it's the, crazy. I, I went into the Starbucks on the corner of Sunset La Brea and there were three butt plugs and an unused condom just sitting right by the front door. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? You put them, you put them in your pocket? Of yeah. course I did. Hey, they, hey, I read the instructions on that shit. They're dishwasher Enjoy the extra? Safe. Is that what Starbucks yeah. told you? <laughs> yeah, it's called dishwasher safe, buddy. You can resell those. Uh, Jamie, we're going to go ahead and quote you, if you don't mind, because we do a weekly roundup when we post our picks. Can I go ahead and put you out for uh, Jumia and Zynga? Yeah, and I and I also like Chewy. If oh, you want to put doesn't? that in too, okay. I I think Chewy at sixty seven. I mean, it's beaten down. Um, I just every every day, someone on my street has one of those big Chewy boxes being delivered. Uh, it's a great business if you're a dog lover. I just see. What it. about cats? I'm not a cat person. I'm sorry. I know we had Hello! cat yesterday. <laughs> and the interview at the end goes south. Now, I am going to start using Chewy just because I order so much cat litter. And I love the idea of it just showing up on my door as opposed to schlepping it in the, you know, in the parking lot. Yeah. No. And, and Gary Holt, shout out to Gary Holt from Exodus and Slayer. Shout out to uh, Blasco plays bass for Ozzy. They are catter day to the day they die. They are cats. I, I look, I, I'm not judging anyone. All I know is that I don't know. And hey, dude, if you ever, ever need a pick me up and you just need to be like, have the energy to run through a brick wall, just look at Slayer opening up in Japan. Have you seen that? See oh, that dude, video? I, tour I toured with them. I sang, I went and had to fill in on vocals for Slayer and I sang the wrong words. Luckily, it was. It was before I had drank a whole bottle of Grey Goose during the day. That was a whole other problem. I don't drink anymore. I'm sober, but I, I've done a world tours with Slayer, and let me tell you, you ran for war. 
Oh, you ran it for what's up? Yeah, hard. Or is caught, dude. Just if you're ever about to just get into it, dude, you gotta watch that video, bro. Yeah, for sure. I I've seen them just decimate venue after venue. One of the best bands ever. One of my favorite bands ever. Well, Jamie, thank you for coming on, dude. Get that financial podcast going so we could do swap casts and get each other's fans to listen to each other's show. Cause I think we just need more of these shows. Yeah. We gotta, um, we gotta, we gotta talk off air. Cause I'm definitely making moves in the podcast space. I'm getting a studio set up here in Connecticut for everybody who's too scared to go into New York. I'm not scared. I'll go in. I don't care. It's just getting the guests to come into New York and go to gas digital is super uh, challenging, but, uh, but yeah, let's definitely talk crypto gym and Mike profits might have to be a show. We'll, we'll figure it out. Hardcore hedge fund, the show. And then Hardcore hedge fund. <laughs> yeah, Hardcore dude, hedge I think fund. that's great, man. And then we'll get cash daddies. We'll start a little network. Headbangers yeah. head, headbangers hedge fund. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I bet you someone already trademarked that or, or if they did, I hope they got the domain on Squarespace and used my code or no, no Wix. What's this? What's the, what's your sponsors? Is it- no, we have blue chew and Lucy dude. We only do boners and fucking nicotine on this show right now. <laughs> oh, blue chew. I'm all, I'm doing a new blue chew slogan every week. I think this, I think this week it was, uh, uh, if your dongs done you wrong, be get get long and strong with bluechew.com promo code <laughs> Josta for what is it free shipping? I don't know what it is. Five dollars shipping. Five dollars shipping. Yeah. Blue chew. Blue chew. We're dropping dick on you. Blue chew. Gosh, there you go. See here's the promo code. Isolate that audio and I'll put music to that and send it to you. <laughs> oh, we would love that. I'll do that gonna, for you. Send, send gonna, me that. Isolate that audio of Sam singing it and send me that. And I'll put a little drums and some bass and guitar underneath it. Because I was just going to do that with I have a whole skit with Blue Chew. Bonus boners and all this stuff. We're giving them too much free money in advertising. Well, right now. it's boners. We should do. That's the only thing yeah. saving us right now. Rock our boners with this zombie apocalypse coming. Guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to uh, Cash Daddy's Jamie Josta. We love you, dude. I appreciate love it. you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. You're always welcome back, dude. Anytime and I got to get you guys talk. on my shows too. You're welcome anytime. We got to get you down to Gas Digital. Well, if you're in, if you're in the city, yeah, come by Gas. Did Digital. you just hit puberty right there? Would you just? <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll do it again soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Take care. Cash Daddy.